today I'm going to go over the top 10 worst home insurance claim mistakes that you could make as a public adjuster, as a homeowner, as a whatever. These are the worst of the worst of the mistakes that you can make throughout the claims process. And let's get into it now in three, in two, in one. What's up, advocates? Welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Claims Show. I'm your host, Vince Perry, owner of Elite Resolutions Commercial Claims Advocate, and I really want to get into the top 10 worst claim mistakes that you can make uh, on an insurance claim. Believe it or not, there's a lot of things. There's probably way more than 10, and it's the reason why you hire a professional to handle your claim for you. But still, there are, I would say, these 10 things are probably the worst of the worst that could happen upon filing a claim. Before I get into it, I want you to make sure you subscribe to this channel below, and also check out Commercial advocate.com where you can see all of our events and eliteresolutions.com where you can check out our public adjusting firm. So additional living expenses is one of the most difficult parts of an insurance claim. And the reason is, is it's very high pressure. And as a public adjuster or contractor, you're already dealing with the negotiating of the build back process. You don't want to have to deal with ALE as well. Black Diamond Housing Services does all of that. They don't even charge the client. They bill it directly to the insurance company. It's all covered under the ALE coverage. So you need to call Black Diamond if you have a house that has been severely lost, whether it's like severe mold severe water, fire, anything like that, where they need a place to stay, call Black Diamond Housing Services and they'll be able to take care of your client from beginning to end. If you're struggling and waiting forever and a day to get paid on your claims because you have to wait for the mortgage company, you have to wait for the client, you have to wait for all of these things, Inc. Payments by Inc. solves that for you. By simply uploading it onto their system, everything gets processed and you get directly deposited your fee into your bank account. Choose InkPay and make sure that you use the promo code VINCE so that you can get $299 off the initial registration fee. So go ahead and check it out, Ink Payments. We've been using it for a long time. Number one, number one mistake. I'm gonna start with probably the most important mistake and that is failing to read your policy. Making sure that you have coverage when a loss occurs. When I go into a property and I take a look at the damage, the first thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the policy to make sure that the damage that I'm looking at is actually covered under the insurance policy. You have to understand you know, what's water backup, what's water damage, what's flood damage. Those are all regarding water but they're all different kinds of losses. Making sure that you, have, uh, that you don't have a contractor right to repair which is very common common in this industry uh, now and making sure that you have a decent deductible. If you have, da- I always use this example, if you have damage to a single bathroom and you have a $5,000 deductible and the repairs to that bathroom are going to be under $5,000, what's the point of notifying your insurance company that you are now higher risk for a claim? right? Because everybody always asks, if I file a claim, is it going to raise my rates? No, not necessarily. They're not allowed to raise your rates. However, your file does end up in underwriting. And if you filed several claims, it's going to make you more high risk, which is going to increase your policy, but, or it's going to increase your, your premiums. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is don't waste your time on an insurance claim unless it's going to be really worth it for you. So number one is failing to read the policy. Number two is just not having the right coverage and submitting the claim. Now, I say this because it's actually happened to me, not personally, but on my clients, where I have filed claims and not having really read through the coverages and us wasting our time. It made me look like an idiot because I'm the expert, but I'm proud to say with 15 years of experience and your go-to person when it comes to insurance claim knowledge that it has happened to me And it's happened to me more than once. So don't worry if you're a public adjuster and you've submitted a claim and you realize later that there's a limitation or coverage is not there, it's happened to me. And if you're a policyholder and you just submitted the claim and the way you presented the claim is completely against anything that's covered, don't worry, it's happened to all of us. So making sure you have proper coverage. Number three is not having... If you suffer any kind of contents, make sure that you've got an inventory list. Make sure that you've got some kind of list there that you can actually do because I, as a public adjuster, I'm going to do my best to put together a contents list and there are content specialists out there that might be watching the show that can do a hell of a job and maybe even better than you as a homeowner, but... As the homeowner, you are you know your prized possessions more than anybody else. So I can put a list together and I can go look at values, but you're going to have to confirm that list to make sure those values are actually according to sort of, you know, what you what you feel also is the proper value and what you spent on that. Um, but you also have to know, let's say if it's a severe fire, what was there? 
you know, I don't know what was there. So it's, it's very important that you have an idea of what your content is. Number four is failing to maintain the property. Maybe this should have been number one because failing to maintain the property will get your claim denied. Even if it's a great claim and by great, I mean just like easy, it's covered, it's under your insurance, it is what it is, boom. If you don't put a tarp up, if you don't call a mitigation company, if you don't dry everything up, if you don't turn off the water, if you don't do what you have to protect your property, your claim will be denied. So failing to maintain and protect your property is a huge one. Poor communication is going to be number five. Communicating with your public adjuster, communicating with your insurance adjuster, communicating with people uh, throughout the insurance claims process is very important. Make sure you keep the lines of communication open as often as possible. Number six is waiting. We have a process at Elite Resolutions where we follow up with the insurance company every seven days. Don't submit a claim and just sit on your hands and wait and expect the insurance company to do something. They are not going to do it. Uh, they do have a tendency to, de de to delay a lot of claims, and sometimes it's not completely their fault. There's hundreds of thousands of insurance claims out there, and the fact of the matter is, is they can't get to all of them. It's up to you to call the insurance company, follow up, and find out what's going on. Number seven is honestly trying to tackle a complicated claim on your own. Don't try to tackle a claim on your own. It's just too difficult. There's too many things involved in the investigation of an insurance claim for a layman, no offense, like you to handle it yourself. There's a proof of loss. There's proper documentation, proper photographing, proper repair bills, proper mitigation bills, proper follow-up every seven days. And that's not even getting into the timeline in your unfair claims practice statutes where you the insurance company is required to respond to certain things and you don't know that we do. So if it gets, if it's a simple claim, then maybe go ahead and give it a shot. But I, as somebody who we are a growing firm, and the reason why I continue to hire at the firm is because there's more things that I feel I should not be doing. As a homeowner, if it's me, then it's different because I, I do this for a living. But as a homeowner who doesn't know the first thing about insurance, I would not be handling my claim. Have a professional do it. That's the way to go. Number eight is not documenting the damage. Now, this may seem obvious, but we all have a cell phone that shoots really great photos. Take this out as soon as, as, soon as a loss occurs and take photos. Please take photos. This is one of the most things you could probably see a hundred other videos on this channel with me that tell you about taking photos after a loss occurs. Make sure you document the damage. Take as many photos and videos as possible. Number nine is going to feel a little funky, but cleaning up too fast, you should clean up. Make sure the damage is not getting worse, but it, the, the insurance policy also requires you to show the damage to the insurance company. So if you're not documenting like crazy, make sure that some of the damage is still there, not getting worse, protected. So when the insurance company gets there to, so that they can see it, it's just going to help your claim overall. And then number 10 is, uh, yeah, don't file too many claims. I would say a big mistake is people just file claims just for nothing. I already said in the beginning, don't file a claim that's not worth it. And I'll end it with, don't file a claim that's not worth it. You don't want to have too many claims on your record uh, because it's just going to raise your rates and it's going to just make your life much more difficult uh, by you having sort of a flashlight a light on you as a red flag on you in a way. So that's it. Those are the top 10 mistakes that I believe that people make um, with homeowners insurance, uh, with the claims process in general. Uh, you know, for me, the ones that stand out is just making sure that you have the right coverage um, and making sure that you're not tackling these claims alone and really not documenting the damages. Those to me are probably the three most important ones that you just got to do on every single claim. Everybody needs an attorney on their side. So whether you're a public adjuster or contractor or anyone else in the insurance claims business, make sure that you have an attorney that you could rely on, that you can go to for questions whenever you need it. That guy for me for the last 12 years has been David Farber. David Farber is the owner of the Farber Law Firm, and he has been there for me from the beginning of my career until now. And I would love for him to be able to help you as well. So make sure you call him at this number here and visit his website so you can learn more about the amazing David Farber of the Farber Law Firm. 
I had been looking for an accountant for years and I was unable to find anybody that I liked, that I worked with and was able to do what I needed to be done to my taxes and to my accountant. Jeremy David at Noble Wealth has been a godsend to me, my family and my company. We have saved so much money in taxes I can't even begin to describe and he knows what he's doing. You need to call Jeremy at Noble Wealth and get yourself the right accountant because he's the man who's going to help you save on taxes because ultimately you don't want to be making money, especially if you're self-employed and having it all go to the IRS. Call Jeremy, call Noble Wealth, and they will help you tremendously with the entire accounting process and your tax situation from A to Z. Well, thank you very much, everybody. My name is Vince Perry, the Commercial Claims Advocate, uh, where we consult and train uh, public adjusters all over the country. You go to commercialclaimsadvocate.com for more information there and eliteresolution.com where we actually take care of insurance claims. And if you're interested in coming to work for us, please, by all means, uh, you're more than welcome to fill out an application. That's it, guys. Content Wednesday is over. We'll be back on Friday for a nice little best of and then next Monday, most likely for a podcast. And it's almost two to three times a week now. I'm exhausted, but I love doing this. This is my favorite part of the job. Thank you very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment below and subscribe. See you later. Have a great week. Peace out.